all right all right all right so if you like the channel that's uplifting the name of jesus christ and it's also spreading the true gospel of jesus christ by all means click on the like comment subscribe and share okay do all that so um y'all know what this is but um tonight is going to be a rebuke video and i never knew this person existed but i'm gonna be honest i never thought that back even when i saw the video like this person's an elder this person is an elder, but he's an he goes by the title apostle. So, I'm gonna be honest, this was kind of tough because Bible does say do not rebuke an elder. Does say that, but this person calls himself an apostle, and here's the thing: he's doing he's doing prosperity preaching. And taking scriptures out of context, especially when the word riches is in scripture. So we're going to go through, I'm going to back this up with scripture as well too. And while I'm doing this rebuke, I do pray that the Lord watches, I mean, not watches, but guards, helps me guard my um, tongue. Because at the end of the day, even as you get up older, even as people get up older, you will know who is grown in Christ and who is not of Christ. Because this man has been teaching on how to get money for a very, very, very long time, ever since he was young. And is still doing this. And it's sad. It's very, very sad. So if you want to know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Apostle Leroy Thompson Sr. I saw a clip of him when he was much younger. And he was telling the congregation, I kid y'all not, had to be a big old conference, y'all. This, this was when church people was dressed like church folks. Like women, they were dressed up as women. Men dressing as men. Like, I kid you all not, but what was going on in this church, well, in this, at this event, Y'all, when I say I saw the video and I was upset, I, I I mean upset, upset. I ain't lying to y'all. I was upset. I was very upset. But at the end of the day, I'm going to keep it real because whenever I hear prosperity teaching, it irks my nerves. There are souls. There are souls that are on the line and they need to hear sound doctrine. They need to hear sound doctrine. Prosperity teaching is what's going to lead a lot of people to hell. And I'm one of them that even last night when I was ministering on IG, I still tell I still tell people to this day, hell is still hot. Hell is still hot. And the more people turn to prosperity gospel, then they do sound doctrine. Oh, a lot of people going to be in hot water. That's all I'm going to say. A lot of people going to be in some hot water. Ear itching. <laughs> I don't know why, but my ear is itching. But um, tonight, I'm going to get into it and tell y'all, I mean, get into this rebuke. And then after that, yeah, go from there. Um, Goodness, my ear is itching. Oh, no. Who and their grandma? Yeah, anyway, I'm not about to be superstitious, but anyway. Uh, we're going to pray first, and then I'm going to go into what I saw, go into the rebuke, everything. So, and we're going to, I'm going to back this up some scripture, okay? I shouldn't say some scripture. I'm going to back it up with scripture. Do you hear me? All right, so Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask and pray tonight as I do this rebuke, Lord, that you help me to guard my tongue. Father, I understand that Leroy Thompson Sr. is an elder. And although he has the title apostle, Lord, I want to do a gentle rebuke. I'm not going to sugarcoat 
But I'm going to keep it real on one, twos, and threes, and I'm going to be respectful about this as well. So, Father God, help me. And I mean, please help me. And if I do get a little fired up, just now I'm getting fired because it's sad that even as he has gotten up older, Father, he really hasn't changed. And it's sad. And it's really, really sad. So, Father God, I ask and pray tonight that ears be open to hear, eyes be willing to see. I pray, Father God, that if someone does not know you, Lord, that they get to know you, Lord, before it's too late, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, Father God, tonight. Increase, Father, and that way I will decrease. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so I'm pretty sure y'all grandmas, y'all aunties, great grandmas, whomever, un uncles, um... Grand days, they all probably know who Leroy Thompson Sr. is. So, this brother, and I'm not going to really give him the title apostle because you got to think about the apostles in the Bible. None of them were talking about getting money or money come to them. Again, I'm going to tell y'all something about Leroy Thompson Sr. He is the one that came up with the manifestation um doctrine to get money and man-made doctrine and everybody in this um congregation they will repeat money coming to me money come to me money come to me i'm like what in the world like y'all when i saw the video i was so so upset i was so upset with a capital u and I'm like, if this was going on back then, now being leaked now, going on back then, and now it's just being released because this is the year 2024. Do you hear what I'm saying? But most recently, he did another teaching. Now, he's older and in age, but he's he did another um teaching about money coming to them. Talking about money's going to come to them easy, first of all. Nobody and their grandma, not everybody here on earth is going to be rich. It's going to be rich. I don't know why past so-called pastors, so-called prophets, so-called apostles, so-called whatever title you want to give yourself. Why are you so concerned about money? When Jesus told his disciples, don't take anything when I send you out in twos. Don't take nothing. Technically, Jesus was teaching his uh, the people that he was training up his apostles. He was teaching the um, disciples. He was telling them to um, he was teaching them how to be um, faithful, unprofitable servants. Period. Period. And and it goes to show today that people have to do. They have to um, say more to bring more money in for themselves. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. When I saw the video, I saw the clip. Hopefully, I can um, also um, show y'all it. I, I don't want to bring my other phone, but I'm going to try to get a clip of it and then just um, post it up so y'all can see what these people were doing. They literally were running up to the altar and throwing the money at the um, pulpit. I kid you not and i'm like y'all are not at the strip club literally you're not at the strip club why are you throwing money at the altar why are you throwing money at the altar like why why would you be throwing money at the altar Like, that is not the altar. Should be a place for you to lay down your burdens. Period. Nowadays, and I know they still probably doing this, whatever the message is preached on, and I know good and well it's not sound doctrine message. I promise y'all it ain't. Promise y'all it's not. The, whatever was preaching taught on, everybody and their grandma going to run up to the altar. So that way they can get you know receive the blessing and all that instead of 
whatever is bugging them, whatever is keeping their hearts bound and changed. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people that are still inside the building and they're not saved. A lot of them are still living in bondage. A lot of them are still trying to hold on to the very thing that Jesus does not want them to hold on to in order for them to be truly set free. There's a lot of people that are still living in sin. And what are the pastors doing? Not preaching on sin. They, their excuse, I don't want to offend nobody. You better offend me with the truth so that way I won't end up in hell. Care. I, I, this is what I hate. This is what I really hate nowadays. A lot of people are wearing their hearts on their sleeves. When you're called and you're chosen, you can't wear your heart on your sleeve. If I had to rebuke my own daddy, I, pr- I promise you, I had to rebuke my own daddy, y'all. I literally did. I said, this, I said Lord, this man, I said, this man, I don't know what the problem is, but I literally had to rebuke my own daddy, y'all. I did. And I'm not bragging, but it's just to the fact when you do things, you know you ain't got no business doing. Somebody got to tell you. Because apparently, I'm like, the people you hanging out with, they ain't telling you nothing. Somebody got to tell you something. I even had to rebuke my own brother and sister. And them to my heart. Now, I had to raise them at one point in time. I had to raise them. Don't ask my age. And my mother can testify, I'm mom when she's not there. Literally, and I mean literally, I'm going to tell y'all something. I had to rebuke them. I feel rebuking now. Gots to. I, if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. When you love people, you tell them the truth. You tell them the truth. I don't care if it's going to offend somebody. The last message I received from someone, yes, it was strictly convicting me. Like literally convicting me. And I said, you know what? I said, I ain't about to play around. I'm, I'm about to make my choice today whom I'm going to serve. But what really, I, you know what? This is really for any, for any pastor or anybody with the title pastor that's not preaching sound doctrine. Because the Bible does say many will turn from sound doctrine. Many will turn to sound doctrine. And I'm going to be honest. If he was doing it back then, ain't no telling. Well, the, the video I saw today, like I said, I was so, 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 so upset. Because if the Lord kept you this long, I'm like this. I will be repenting. I will be repenting and turning away. From wickedness. Because all he is teaching. All Leroy is teaching. Is man made doctrine. And the fact that he. Was doing manifestation of money. That's demonic Leroy. That is demonic. That is not. Manifestation is not of God. A lot of people are practicing. Manifestation. A lot of people are practicing manifestation. I'm going to say one more time. A lot of people are practicing manifestation in order to get money. They're not, they don't really want to go out there and work. Mm-mm. No, they don't want to go out there and work. They don't. They want money. And then, what the heck? Now, somebody preaching today. But I'm like this, you can get upset all day, but somebody's gonna say what they gotta say. Any hoop, as I'm saying, God's people are poor people. 
God's chosen people are poor people. Now everybody and their grandma is going to be rich. Now granted he did allow King Solomon to get some riches. He allowed King Solomon to get rich. No lie. But what did Solomon did? Solomon turned from the Lord because of the women. The women. All the wives he had. But the fact, Leroy, that you're preaching money come to me, money's going to come to people easily, that's false. That is false. And then the fact that you was talking about how much and see that you and your wife be sowing. Let me tell you something, Mr. Leroy. The seed is the word. The Bible says that the seed is the word. It's the word. It's the word. It's not money. God does not care about money like that. He don't need our money. No. The fact that you and your wife talking about y'all both sold $1,500 seeds. That $1,500 can go to somebody that's in need. That $1,500 can... um. Be invested in the community. It can help somebody that is that can't even afford hospital bills. Or that's on the verge of being kicked out of their homes. Or having their car repossessed. And you want to talk about how much you sold? Let me tell you something, Leroy. Let me tell you something. What went to you, first and foremost? What went to you? Because first of all, it is so sad. It is so sad that an elderly man is up in the pulpit still teaching on money. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And you're now teaching people. You're now teaching people to manifest about money. To go grab money. Just to make money their idol. Guess what? You're serving money. More than you are serving the Lord. And it is sad. You are an elder. I don't know your age. You look like you be like 60 or 70 years old. Probably now. But it is so sad. It is so sad. That you're still teaching from the very same things. That you taught from before. In the early 90s. Because that looks like 90s time. And people just running up there. Giving their hard earned money. And throwing it at the altar. That altar is not meant to be. Like a stage. For you know. How people be at the strip club. Like That's not what that altar is for. That altar. Is for the lay down burdens. That altar is meant for people. To come up there and get healed. And for people to seek out the Lord. That's what that altar is for. Not to be throwing money. People just throwing money. Thinking they once they throw it, it was gonna and then the fact you said money's gonna come to them and they oh 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 uh-uh. God is not a genie. God is not a genie. He's not a genie. And not everybody is going to have money. Not everybody is going to have money. And it is beyond sad. And I mean sad is beyond sad. That you're still teaching this. And then you have the audacity. To quote Dr. Martin Luther King's quote, free at last, that does not, that should not even line up with what you're saying. Because if I'm going to talk about being free at last, I need to be free from some strongholds. I need to be free from sin. I need to be free, period, from the flesh desires that I still be combating on a day-to-day basis. If we're going to talk about true freedom, let it be that. 
Not let it be about financial freedom. That's a fleshly desire. That is a fleshly desire. And I, 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 I just still can't get over it. Then you made the congregation yell hallelujah after you declare unto them. You've given them false hope. You've given them false promise because I'm going to tell you something. You know better than Juanita, T.D. Jakes, Ben Hinn, Rodney Parsley. Because it seems like those are the and Joel Osteen. It seems like everybody and their grandma want to talk about money and becoming rich. The word of God. Is what I need on a day-to-day -day basis. This is my daily bread. Because if we look deeper into the Lord's prayer. Where it says, give us this day our daily bread. It's not about money. This is daily bread. It's the word. I need to get into the word. I need to submit and surrender myself in the presence of the Lord. So that way I can hear his word more clear. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Not by me sowing a seed of whatever amount of money. No, that's not a seed of faith. A seed of faith is me hearing the word of God. Not giving you money. Not giving, Nobody should be giving their hard-earned money unto you or any of those false prophets I named. Because you know what? That tells me something. And then it really does tell me something. You just basically told on yourself, Leroy. You basically did. I'm, st I'm stopping to pray right now, y'all. Stopping to pray right now. But I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it real because at the end of the day, it is just sad. You're giving false promise to everybody that's sitting inside. And then you went, you, you, you ain't no better than that because you went to the Old Testament. By the way, we're in, it says First Chronicles 29, 29, 13. I want to make sure I'm... Maybe y'all... Okay, here it is, y'all. I found it. I found it. I knew it was in here. First Chronicles 29. He, he went by using this. He went by using this. But we're going to start at verse 11. We're going to start at verse 10, okay? Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Y'all, I just said something about the Lord's Prayer, right? And I just realized something. David... Just said, thine is the kingdom. And at the end of the Lord's prayer is, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Look at David. Come on, David now. But one thing about David, and I still love and admire the David to this day. David knew how to serve the Lord, how to praise the Lord, how to worship the Lord. All his brothers, they were looking at man's outer appearance they were looking for man's approval they was looking at 
man's appraisal and everything. Not David. David was after the Lord. He was more after the Lord's heart than he was after the Lord's hand. And he got, and, and you know, a lot of us, we, we're we kind of like, I ain't going to say that, but we're kind of, um, I ain't going to say a lot of us. I ain't going to say, but the ones that, you know, let me put it like this. I didn't realize how different I was. And I mean, I did not realize how different I was until I started realizing my purpose. Until I started realizing I needed Christ more than I needed anything. And then really surrendering to Christ and building a relationship with Christ. I did not realize how much different I really was. Till everything kind of came together. I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm called. I'm chosen. But at the same time, I was running from my calling. And one thing I love about David, look at verse 13. Um, He said, but who am I? Granted, Moses said, who am I? But David oftentimes said it. I'm like, you know, I'm the same way. Who am I? Who am I? Because when I, you know, when, like I told you, I, I ran away from a calling. And I was like, Lord, you, you really want to use me? Are you sure? Are you sure? Sure. I was, that's how bad I was running, y'all. <laughs> but at the same time. I was like, you know, I'd rather be used by God than be used by people because when people use you, and I mean when they use you, it's for their own gain. And I, I'm like this. This is why I don't fool with everybody and their grandma. And this is why I don't go around a lot of, you know, family members and whatnot. I really don't like the term family members, but I don't go near a lot of relatives. I really don't. And it's not being mean. It's just being real. You, everybody can't go with you when you're trying to elevate in Christ. Oh, we're gonna let's talk about elevation for me. Elevation is a spiritual thing, and if we're talking about prospering. Prosperity should be a spiritual thing, not a material thing. I'm gonna tell you why. Because the Bible does tell us about you know prosper, but that doesn't mean like to get rich or anything. How about prospering in Christ? How about elevating in Christ? How about getting to a point where you can just hear his voice? How about getting to a point where you can know all the secrets and the mysteries of the Bible? That's that type of elevation I want and that type of prospering I want. Leave everything in the world. Leave it with your grandma there. I want that type of, and every, each and every day I still strive for it. That's how hungry I am. You got to be consistent when you're walking with Christ. You can't just walk with him one minute and be like, okay, he ain't talking back to me. I'm gone, deuces. No, you got to be consistent. You got to be planting seeds of faith daily, daily. And I'm not talking about money. You need to get in the word daily. These false prophets, the ones that y'all are after, the ones that y'all keep running after and all that, the ones that keep giving y'all false hopes and promises, they're not telling y'all this. They're not. They ain't telling y'all this. And guess what? It's sad. Most people are still just listening. Listening to them. It is sad. And I mean sad with a capital S. It's so sad. Whew. So sad. But we're going to get into verse 13. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great, and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Okay. This has nothing to do with getting money. And, but this is one of the teachings that, one of the um, passages of scriptures that Leroy taught in the most recent video I saw. And I'm thinking to myself, where in the world is it? Where is this world coming to? And why is a man 
still sticking with what he knows. What what I wouldn't say what he knows, but what he feels like he should be teaching when it goes against the word of God. Because a, a lot of times the false teachers they will take something out of proportion they will take scripture out of proportion and out of context especially if, especially if it's from the old testaments no i mean old testament no lie no lie i had to fix myself when i said that forgive me but they will take scripture out of context especially from the old testament they'll even do the same with the new testament but i'm gonna tell you something if you read the bible everyone that the lord used not everybody had money moses didn't even have money like that uh-uh. he had to gather all the people that he had to gather he didn't he had to, that his greatest assignment was to Go to get the people out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. Sad part is Moses didn't go to the promised land because of disobedience. Uh-uh. Moses didn't go. Uh-uh. And I even read it in Deuteronomy, y'all. Moses was still trying to ask the Lord, can, like, can the Lord change his mind about him not going to, like, yeah, I kid you all now. I'm like, Moses, really? My like, Lord told him, no, he's like, you ain't going to go. He said, because Moses hearkened to the voice of the people instead of spoken to that rock. That rock represented Jesus, by the way. Going to hearken to the people because they were murmuring. And, and, that's one, and that's another thing. A lot of people are still murmuring. They're still murmuring because they're listening to these false prophets. They are listening to these false prophets. Every time they so say, my blessing ain't came. Did I do something wrong? Murmuring, complaining, but I'm telling you why, what you did wrong. You hearkening to the voice of men knowing good and well. <sighs> what they're saying really doesn't make any sense. Why were you so, so much just to get a blessing? Make it make some sense. It's sad. I mean, it's so sad. And like I said, I would have thought. I, I never thought. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just. Whew. Oh my goodness! Um, uh, I, like I said, I'm upset I'm, because I care about the souls that are sitting inside. And then this was the bad part. Leroy was talking about he was preaching something strange. He didn't even know what he was preaching. Nobody and their grandma got up and left. I'm gonna be honest. If, and I'm saying this to be honest, if. A pastor tells you they don't know what they're about to preach. Well, they call themselves a pastor or whatever title, and they say they don't know what they're preaching. Get up and go because it's wasting your time. You don't need to be in a place and they're preaching confusion. God is not the author of confusion. He's not. God isn't. Period. He is not the author of confusion. And it's just sad that more people are still believing in man-made doctrines, prosperity gospel. No one good well that the Bible is against prosperity gospel. I'm gonna turn to the second Peter. If y'all can turn to me to um second Peter. Because I know Second Peter talks about let's see.
Let's see. I know it's in here about false teachers. Okay, so it's adverse. To, I think I spoke on this with y'all. But it was something that was read to me today as I saw the video. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here it is. For when these be great swellings of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, that the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning." I'm going to tell you something. And I mean this when I say this. Quit listening to these false teachers that are preaching on getting rich. The church these days and time have gotten worse. Back then, souls were being saved. Until, I don't know when all this prosperity junk started. And yes, I'm going to call it junk. Because it is junk. It's like junk food. Sound doctrine, that's bread and butter right there. Do you hear me? That's bread and water. We need that. We need sound doctrine. We need good orthodox teaching. We need to know the basics. We need to know the basics. We need to know them, period. Excuse all them acting up outside, y'all. I was dealing with this last night, too, but I ain't going to complain. No, I just want souls to be saved. But I'm going to let y'all know what's going on, because at the end of the day, it is beyond sad. People don't want to hearken unto sound doctrine. It's like they try to get rich so bad. I'm like, goodness, nothing new underneath the sun. But you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I needed that. I've been reading the book of Ecclesiastes lately, and especially when I'm at work, because my brother in Christ and I, we've been having conversations, and um, yeah, I've been reading the book of Ecclesiastes a lot lately, excuse me, but um, and in the book of Ecclesiastes, I think I did a teaching on that too, I can't remember, I might have did. Anyway, oh, I did, but I should have just posted up that video. It's called Vaxation of the Spirit, Vaxation by the Spirit and all that. But I was mainly talking about vanity, vanity. Prosperity is vanity. Getting houses, getting cars, getting money, all this stuff that the world tries to. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all, uh, everybody their grandma can get mad. There is no full fulfillment in material things. In material, in material things. I kid you all not. I, I, I'm going to tell you, so I used to want a lot of stuff. And I'm thankful for the things that I never did got. And even there are some things I do have. But guess what? I don't keep them. A lot of times I don't I'll be like, you don't serve no purpose. Bye. I've given away journals. I kid y'all not. I used to want to write a thousand books. But I'm like, you know what? I'm good, Lord. I say I need my hands so I that way I can, you know, hold the word. <laughs> but you know, I'm going I'm writing books right now too. And um but uh, I ain't gonna share y'all with me and my brother in Christ. We were talking about with books and all that. What's my writing and all that? So we're you know, we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> That's between me and the Lord. So I'm praying when I do this fasting, the Lord reveals 
more. Whew. But um, and one thing when I fast, y'all, I'm not fasting to get anything like materialistic or anything. I'm fasting so I can be closer to Christ. I'm fasting so I can be free. I am fasting to be free. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want nothing holding me in chains. Do you hear me? Because guess what? Sometimes your old ways they can sneak up. Time to fast. Time to review. <laughs> I ain't got time going back. I don't. Mm-mm. I just don't. Woo. I've been ministering the last two days without even, you know, wanting to get water and everything. I got water right here, but I just want to keep on going. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to be honest. I like, it, it's, it's just sad. It, it's just sad that you would think somebody would turn from their own fleshly desires and wanting to teach about money. I never thought I would see that. It, it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Leroy, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to repent. Because if you don't, you will be in hell uplifting up your eyes. You need to repent. Money ain't everything. Money is not everything. And it shows me that you have the love of money in your heart. But you want to teach it to everybody to take from God. Because that's the main thing prosperity gospel teaches. It teaches a take from God. Instead of offering your body as a living sacrifice, which sound doctrine does. I was listening to one of my favorite songs by Out of Eden, and in this song it was talking about how they had how the young woman had all her desires and everything. And you know, she was just going about her day with all her desires, and then all of a sudden she was like, I realized I should just surrender all my desires and goals to you, Lord. Instead of just, I'm like, and that's the thing. Every day that the Lord allows me to wake up, I have to talk to him. I be tugging at him and everything. But at the end of the day, I'm not after his hand, I'm after his heart. I'm doing everything I can not to provoke him to anger. They're not teaching all the head either. And then, I, like I, I was even saying last night, I said, Lord, I pray that I get to do a teaching on marriage, especially for the women, those that are married, those that desire to be married. I'm going to tell y'all something. There are two men in my life. Well, two, two people. Well, I ain't going to say people. There's the head of my life, which is the Lord, and there's my husband. I do, I do my best every day not to provoke them to anger. Because when you become one with Christ, it's like a marriage. It is like a marriage. If y'all wonder why I'm shaking the bed, it's because of my ear. And I know people are mad because they just mad. They mad. I don't, I don't know why, but they mad, y'all. They mad. They mad because I'm getting on here because at the end of the day, I have to do my father's business. Do you understand? I have to do my father's business. I can't be out here. I can't just do what I want to do. All that other stuff. Out. Yeah, my ear is itching. Ooh. But anywho, I'm just going to keep it real on the ones, twos, and the threes. Because... Uh, when you're when you're living for Christ, you don't you just can't do everything, you can't tolerate everything or anyone. You can't. Living for him, it requires a lot of sacrifice. There are people that we want to keep, we can't keep because they just don't they're not good for us. I'm not saying, you know, their status or anything. No. The way they live their lives. If they have a problem with us talking about Jesus so much, why have them stay? If they have a problem with us preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ, why have them stay? That's a lot of things I had to learn when betrayal has happened. And when you're called and chosen, yes, you're going to go through betrayal. You're going to go through that. Everybody made grandma to eat. Yeah. Everybody can't stay. They cannot stay. How do you expect to elevate? 
How do you expect to elevate? How? I want to know. How do you expect to elevate in Christ? Like, I want to know. And you want to hold on to people, hold on to everything. Like, once somebody shows me who they really are and they got a problem with me speaking the word of God, bye. I'm going to still pray for you, but you you can't stay over here. You got to go. Mm-mm. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. I'm still praying for you, but you got to go. I mean, I mean, we can't hold on to everybody, okay? Let me tell you how some people please it. That is the worst type of portrayal we can do to God, if you ask me. I'd rather please the Lord than to please people. And the reason why I say it's betrayal to God because it goes to show you fear man more than you fear God. We're not called to fear man. No. The Bible says, for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're supposed to fear the Lord because when we fear the Lord, we worship him. If we fear man, we worship man. That's idolatry right there. And that's people's problems. They idolize man. They idolize people. That's another thing. They idolize these false prophets that are teaching on getting money. Because they want to hear about money. They don't want to hear that hell is still hot. They don't want to hear that there's weeping, moaning, and gnashing of the teeth. That there's no... Exit um fire exit plan or hot or uh, not hot or um, what you call it stop drop and roll in here that, that, that's none of that in there it's hot there's no way out change your way you know what I'm, I'm just gonna say it repent repent okay repent for the kingdom of God is at hand that's what you need to do Choose this day whom ye shall serve. Because I might be the I might be just one of the few that's going to keep crying and spare not. I care about so there's 151 souls that are subscribed to this channel. They are subscribed to this channel. I care about your soul. Not now time have I asked y'all to sow whatever. Because I'm give, I'm planting the seeds in your head. The word of God is free. I don't have a million followers. And I'm not trying to have a million. I'm not trying to have a million. I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses either. That's the thing. A lot of y'all will probably want to keep up with the Joneses. And a lot of y'all probably want the nice car, the nice house, so you can just post it on Instagram. Let me tell you something. A private life is a happy life, okay? Because when you stand up on, when you um, stand to God on Judgment Day, let me tell you what's going to happen. It don't matter. He ain't going to talk about your career, your family. Yeah, um, the car you drove, the house you lived in, all the trips you took, all the awards you won. None of that's going to matter. It's going to matter what did he did, what you did on earth in order to serve him. Did you put him first? Did you not compromise your faith? That's another problem, too. A lot of y'all are compromising your faith to get the things you want. Give me Jesus. And, you know, this has been going on in my heart a lot lately, and in my mind. I've been thinking about a little girl lately. There was a little girl, and um, this little girl wanted Christ. All she wanted is Christ. She just wanted Christ, but she went to a church with her mom, her mom's first husband and all that. Went, went with them and started seeing things. That later on as she got up older, she realized that the stuff that she saw in the church were unbiblical. Nowhere 
in the word of God doesn't tell pastors to blow on people and throw Kleenex at them, throw their jackets, slaying as many people in the spirit because slaying in the spirit ain't even in the word of God. And then what was so sad, the little girl was just trying to, she knew the, and this, this is why this little girl is so different. She grew up to be different from everybody. But um, she, um, how should I say this? She knew deep down something wasn't right. And you know, even kids these days and time, they can catch on. They can catch on. They can catch on to a lot of things. And as they got as she got up older, she thought about, you know, a moment in time in her life that um she told her cousin, she said, Take me outside because she knew what was going on. She knew what was happening. And then the guy that was sitting with her cousin and her was like, Why you want to go outside? And then the little girl said, I'm scared. Because apparently the little girl was fearing the pastor more than she was fearing Christ. And there was no I'm just gonna be honest, the little girl even knew back then that the pastor was not even preaching sound doctrine and there'll be times her mom her aunt her grandma be like y'all need to hear the pastor and it was you can you can see that the fear of man the fear of man and the idolatry was installed in the grandmother you can see you can see that her grandmother's still there to this day, along with her husband. Yeah. The little girl is no longer there. The little girl has actually been out of church for a while. She now has a true and authentic relationship with Christ. But all that little girl wanted was Christ. And guess what? She didn't find Christ in the church. Uh-uh. She might have got saved at 14, but... She didn't find him at Christ. She found him during the time of COVID. Really? Even I will say even before then too, but sometimes we have to go back to where we first believe. What I'm trying to say. And if you caught on who that little girl was, well, she's talking. She's talking. She's speaking. Because all I wanted was Christ. I didn't want the whole Sunday show circus act. I didn't want that. I'm sorry I'm telling y'all this, but then again, I ain't apologize. My thing is this, what I'm saying. If something is not right, even do not underestimate a child, especially if God is going to call and use that child. Now, not I'm, I'm very thankful I'm about to say this. Now, damn time have I used that pain to turn it into a prophet. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Now, damn time have I used that same experience and try to turn it into a prophet. Granted, I write, but here's the thing: what I'm trying to say. Not when I'm ministering to y'all about you know the things that I've seen and all that. I don't tell y'all the soul. I don't tell y'all. The, no, I don't put up my PayPal. I don't even put up my Amazon link so y'all can buy the books because I give y'all the books for free. I don't know what bills and all y'all got to pay. So that's. Oh, and I got to let y'all know when the free book announcements are going to be as well, too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Or my Cash App. I don't tell y'all this. Oh. I care about your soul and that was another thing I realized too growing up I cared about the people that just kept falling out I'm like somebody ain't right for them just keep falling out they really deliver the word <laughs> I cared about souls now I'm sorry if I'm you know sound like I'm a little drunk no and I'm not I care about souls I care about a soul more than I care about paycheck. Because a true prophet won't see souls delivered and set free. A true prophet will tell you the truth regardless. Period. 
I don't have time. I mean, I'm not calling myself a prophet. I'm not calling myself a prophetess either. God got to tell me that for himself. He has to ordain me if he wants me to be in that position. Now, if he gives me the gift of prophecy, I still got to act in a, and govern myself accordingly and still live by his word. Still live for him. I can't just be out here doing anything, y'all, still. Mm -mm. There's a difference between walking in the walking in the office of a prophet and then the gift of prophecy. So it's two different things. And a lot of people get them mixed up. <laughs> they do. That's why, you know, I, that's why I say, you know, I ain't about to call myself just anything. I just say vessel. I'd rather just say a vessel. Now, if God wants me to be a prophetess, I'll do it. I will do it. Because tell you the truth, I'm doing the things that a prophet is supposed to do. I'm warning y'all to repent. I'm fasting. There are times I don't want to fast, but I kind of fast. This life ain't easy. And then here's the thing. I'm denying the flesh. A real one would deny their flesh. Real one would, den would deny the flesh. Kid you not. But like I said, I, I I I just can't call myself something if God did not ordain me to you know to do that. And this is why a lot of false prophets are in hot water and trouble, trouble. They are. They are like I, that's that's dangerous. Why you want to call yourself something, knowing there's a great responsibility, a great um. A great amount of sacrifice you gotta make. You still got to see y'all something. When you live for Christ, you gotta sacrifice. You gotta sacrifice. You can't go back to the things you used to do. One thing I'm thankful for, I'm very thankful for the Lord has delivered me from something from my past when I was a child that I struggled with for like 28 years, y'all. I'm I'm 29, going on 30. God's willing. But, you know, I'm thankful. And, I, you know, I was thinking of that the other day. I was like, Lord, I'm really free from that. But it's like now I'm having nightmares about. It's like another level. Let me put it like that. Nightmares about another level of what I used to suffer from. But as long as I'm not performing it in a natural realm, I know I got to go hard in, that, um, in the spiritual realm and just keep combating and fighting. I got to. So, Leroy, I hope you take what I say because at the end of the day, it's sad to see an elderly man still preaching about money rather than preaching sound doctrine. That it is so it's so sad, Leroy. It's so sad. I would have think you I would have <laughs> That's sad. Now you got everybody and their grandma yelling money come to me. That's wrong. That you're teaching new ageism. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're teaching new ageism. And that's going against the word of God because a lot of people want to teach more new ageism in this time. That ain't the case. We got souls that are on their way to hell. And if we don't teach them the true gospel of Jesus Christ, then that blood is going to be on our hands. Especially, you're going to have a lot of blood on your hands if you don't repent. You're going to have a lot of blood on your hands if you don't repent. It's so sad. And I expect this as Mike Todd doing something like this because he's young. But no, it goes to show even as people age, not a lot of people have godly wisdom. You want me to teach about money? Leave money where it's at. And focus on the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Surrender yourself to him. Repent before it is too late. I had to say what I had to say because at the end of the day, enough is enough. I'm, I'm just sick of these false prophets over here just preaching about money. Not everybody in their grandma want to hear about money. Okay, enough is enough of that, period. 
So if you or someone you know does not have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, do it now while you have the chance. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next week. Don't wait until next year. Do it now while you have the chance, okay? So may God continue to keep you all. May he bless you all. Be blessed.